Hello everybody. Today we're talking about the very important transit of Venus into Aquarius. I'm Tina Chaudhary. Welcome to my channel and a very warm namaste. So on February 20th, Venus transited to the next house, which was Aquarius. It was in Capricorn for a long time and it was in the clutches of like Saturn and Jupiter and it was part of that six uh, planet conjunction for a long time. So moved into Aquarius and guess who was already there? Sun was already there. So when any planet gets too close to the, uh, the sun, there's a concept in astrology called combustion. So um, because it's too close to the sun, it's, the light is very bright, the sun, and the heat is too much, the planet gets combusted, meaning it doesn't have any power and it actually starts to give, you know, it doesn't have any power to um, give all the benefic influences that it has. Venus is a very benefic planet, which means it, you know, it's the giver of all good things love relationships all the luxury items like fashion good clothes beautiful things so um what happens is that because it combusts it absolutely doesn't have the power to give all of us those benefic influences that it normally gives it loses that power because it's too close to the sun luckily this um transit in aquarius for venus is only going to be until march 16th so it's only for 26 days so thank god that <laughs> the combustion of venus is only going to stay for about 26 days so i'm going to give you very quick predictions for what happens when venus does that predictions for all the ascendants so stay tuned for that i'm also going to give you three tips that are um, nobody really gives out because we're all astrologers and we don't like to give out free tips but I'm going to give you three tips or three astrological remedies to strengthen your Venus in case you're having a lot of problems you can and you should always use these tips anywhere they're good for however long you want to, they want to be good for but um, these three tips are going to be very useful now and forever so I'm going to give those out so you stay tuned and just for a little while longer in the video first thing to consider that when Venus is transiting Aquarius is what are the nakshatras that it's going to travel through so it's going to travel very quickly through three nakshatras the first is going to be Danishta and that's um, ruled by Mars the next one is going to be Satvishak and that's ruled by uh, Rahu and the third one that it goes through very fast is going to be uh, Purva Bhadrapad that's ruled by Jupiter now if you notice that the first two nakshatras are going to be ruled by Rahu and Mars now those are very malefic <laughs> planets as we know in my Rahu video you can see what Rahu represents some obsessions and it's it's pretty malefic sometimes uh, Mars is a fiery planet now both Mars and Rahu are considered masculine energies they are very fiery they're hot-headed and they're considered masculine energies Venus is a f considered a feminine planet and it has a feminine energy which is a soft calming a gentle uh, energy so um, when it goes through these uh, two nakshatras that are ruled by Mars and Jupiter they're going to be oh, she's the feminine energy of Venus is is going to be completely combust and it's going to be overtaken by the very very fiery devastating energy and um, a combative aggressive energy of Mars and Rahu hence Venus is going to completely be combust and not be able to do anything in fact uh, all our love relationships and all the other things the benefic influences of Venus are going to be completely gone and in place our love relationships are going to be impacted by Mars and Rahu which are very masculine aggressive energies as I said so that's one of the things you have to consider that not only is Venus combust but it's it's being ruled by Mars and Rahu for the most part of it and um, it's not able to give anything of the soft calming influence that normally Venus has so it's 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 a hard transit to go through uh, like I said thankfully it's a short transit but the reason the influences on all the ascendants are going to be a, a tough it's going to be a tough influence for all the ascendants so I'm going to go ahead and um, give you the um, predictions very short ones because it's it's a short transit but you know sometimes when you have a difficult transit even a month is is considered like when is this going to be over sort of so let me give you the ascendants uh, the predictions by ascendant and just keep in mind that uh, during this month this is for everybody during this month love relationships all relationships not just re love relationships all relationships are going to be a little taxing and they're going to be take a toll on you sometimes uh, control your temper this is for everybody control your temple temper Mars is a fiery planet Rahu is obsessive so control those obsessive tendencies control your temper watch what you say to people 
and what your obsessions with uh, luxury goods like you might want to do some impulse buying especially now that the pandemic is maybe over not over but you know people are going out and about they may have the urge to buy a lot of things all of a sudden because they are just not been shopping maybe but uh, control that energy a little bit because that's rahu and and the venus combined which is like trying to buy everything in sight and then mars is the fiery planet like let me just do this now let me get this now so it that's the energy that it's gonna you know have in the next month and so uh, you know if you know about it it's, it's easier to control it now i'm going to give you the three best tips that are just the best tips you can do to strengthen your venus now you can do this uh, you should follow these all the time uh, i put them into practice uh, all the time you know throughout my life and i've seen that they've given me great 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 positive results i have an exalted venus in my birth chart so i always try to help make sure that it stays exalted venus is the giver of all beautiful things nice things and also um, if you have a good venus or if you have a strong venus in your chart it certainly gives you a lot of nice beautiful things so um, and a lot of good luck and you know good um, you know love in your life so I'm going to go ahead and share those three tips and then I'm going to do the predictions for you so every planet has been assigned a day and a color so Venus has been assigned a Friday is the day of Venus and um, Fri uh, Venus is also assigned the color of white milky white or um, clear like glass but um, it's cl clear is really not a color so sometimes we can use white for that so white and Friday uh, wearing white on Fridays exalts your Venus now even if you don't wear white on a Friday you definitely shouldn't not wear um, black grays or dark blues because those are the colors that were given to Rahu and Saturn because uh, wearing those on Friday actually uh, debilitate your Venus because uh, Rahu and Saturn are planets that obstruct the benefic influences of Venus so definitely on Friday do not wear those colors or try to wear white a lot also uh, so that's my first tip now a lot of people I'm and I've said this to a lot of my clients and it does work a lot of young girls go out on dates and stuff on a Friday night it's a weekend and everybody tends to wear black on a date and I'm telling you that that's like probably one of the things that I would never do it, I'm not going on a date but I'm just saying if, <laughs> if I was I would not do that um, I would suggest that if wearing a beautiful white uh, something white um, with maybe you can couple it with another color but um, definitely on Friday if you're going on a date do not wear black black the popular color do not wear that wearing dark blues dark grays or even navy um, is a definite no-no on a Friday so definitely don't do that because that actually obstructs the relationship and prevents the relationship from growing further especially if it's your first date I don't think you should do that at all so that's tip number one number two Venus signifies perfume that's one of the main significators of, of Venus uh, definitely use perfume um, not only on Friday Friday, but on a daily basis using Friday using perfume uh, on a daily basis and especially on Fridays exalt your Venus because it enhances or increases the Venus energy around you um, if if you're going to you know if you whenever you change your clothes at night also because Venus is represented at night more than it is during the day so um, you know when you change your clothes at night just spray a little bit of like gentle perfume exalts and um, increases the Venus energy uh, around you so you could do that also so that's tip number two now the third tip is the one that I have it the hardest to follow but it's actually the most the most powerful tip that I can give you to um, increase your Venus energy Venus um, and denotes the sweet things that we eat you know all kinds of desserts milky desserts sugary desserts but all desserts in general because it, it denotes sugar um, you know remember it's a benefic planet and how much we love sugar all of us so um, do not eat anything sugar at night or sweet at night uh, eating sweets at night actually debilitates Venus and um, doesn't help us give the results of, of a good Venus uh, in our chart so definitely cut out the temptation to eat dessert or anything sweet at night because eating that at night debilitates your Venus and I'm the number one culprit so I try my best not to do that because I know that it's definitely takes away the Venus energy from your chart so if even if you have an exalted Venus it actually debilitates it actually it decreases that Venus energy in your chart 
three best tips. Nobody on, on, the, on the YouTube has ever told you that, but try the it. First ascendant is Aries. So Aries, this uh, Aquarius is your 11th house and Venus rules um, your second house and your seventh house. So uh, 11th house is gains um, and things that you would uh, get from either your profession or a job. So um, you may be neglecting your relationships, especially your spouse and your family in pursuit of these uh, um, gains and uh, material things that you have. So be cautious about that and try not to fall into the uh, trap of running after gains and uh, monetary uh, gains. Um, also, because it's the 11th house, uh, watch for your relationship with your uh, friends and networking. You know, um, make sure you take care of that and you don't do anything that you're going to regret later. A Taurus, um, Venus is your ascendant lord, so it, it rules your body in this case, and uh, Aquarius is your 10th house, so that's your career and your profession. So um, you need to watch your relationships in your career and your profession, but more importantly, you need to watch what you're eating because um, it, it also represents your sixth house. So uh, you just make sure you're taking good care of your health and making sure you're eating very healthy because uh, your health might be compromised or you know, as long as you take good care of yourself, it's good, right? For Gemini Ascendants, this transit is happening in your ninth house. The ninth house represents uh, long distance travels, good luck, your dharma, spirituality, and your father. Um, Venus for you represents the fifth house, which is love life, children, and um, spending. So um, definitely this is what's going to happen. There's going to be a lot of chaos around those two things. So the children, if you have little kids, they may be a little bit too demanding, clingy, and wanting a lot of attention. If, if you're not married and you're single, you may have some, some, not issues, but some challenges with your love life, meaning because Mars and Rahu are present there, you may get into a little bit more obsession with, with the whole thing, or you may have a, a difficult love life, let's just say. Uh, you know, it could be a obsessive tendencies or it could be fiery speech and you could have breakup issues or something like that. So um, definitely watch for that. Um, you know, you try to balance your creativity and your normal pursuits with the either the demanding children or a challenging love life. So um, the key to the remedy that I can suggest to you, which works like a miracle, is because it, the ninth house represents your father or your guru. Um, you know, make sure you get your father or your guru's blessings every day. Make sure that you stay in good relationship with him to unlock the good luck in your life. So this is the best remedy I can give you. It's it's only a 30 day transit and it'll go by fast. But um, Gemini ascendants, actually it's a, it's a breather because it, it Gemini, get, you know, Mercury gets out of the bad eighth house that it was in previously. So your previous Venus transit and Gemini transit was much worse. So now you're actually feeling a little better. So for you guys, it's, it's just a little bit better. The challenges are not as bad as some of the other ascendants, but for you, uh, it's it's an easier transit. Answer ascendance, um, Aquarius is your eighth house. It's a difficult house. And um, also uh, it rules your money and your domestic happiness is generally what Venus rules for you. So um, I think that might be uh, there. First of all, there may be sudden either gains or losses related to money, or you may be talking about money a lot in the house and you may be worried about it. So you need to uh, make sure that you find the balance between relationships and um, money matters. Um, make sure you don't sacrifice one over the other. So the, the challenge for you in these 30 days will be finding the balance between relationships within your domestic happiness and um, money matters. The eighth house is a difficult transit. Make sure you take good care of your health as well for Leo ascendants. Now for Leo ascendants, this is actually a good transit in some ways because the sun is your ascendant Lord and the sun is in power. It's actually combusting Venus. So um, the tendency will be for you to take over or dominate other people because remember the sun is combusting Venus. So it, the tendency for the Leo ascendants will be to dominate other people and tell everybody what to do and, you know, kind of be bossy in some ways. Now, you know, you should, you should guard against the, the temptation to do that because yes you may be wanting to do it and you may get away with it but after venus moves on to the next house you may have to bear the consequences of it so definitely don't don't do that and now also because your sixth house is impacted 
uh, at work, you need to make sure that you don't boss around your boss because you may have the temptation to do that and like, tell them off or some or tell her off. And so guard against that. Um, you may feel a little better from last month or when, uh, you know, in the last few weeks, you probably were worried about your job or your work situation. And all of a sudden you may feel very powerful that, okay, this is all good and I'm good. Now you need to guard against the temptation and, and kind of abuse that feeling of fake power that you have but you know if you're feeling good that's good but just don't abuse that Virgo ascendance the uh, transit is happening in your sixth house so the sixth house is a tough house because it deals with the tougher things of life like secret enemies it deals with your workplace it also deals with sickness it also deals with um, loans and credits and you know debits and credits and getting money and or loaning money so for you Venus is the ruler of your family wealth and savings and also the good luck factor your dharma and your religion so um just make sure that you don't make rash rash or quick decisions regarding investments of your savings make sure you take care, good care of your savings you don't make any decisions that are not well thought out and how to spend either spend them or how to save them and, and invest them in the workplace make sure you're respecting women because the six denotes workplace and secret enemies uh, make sure you know who, who's do, who's saying what but make sure you keep quiet and understand what's going on it does represent the sixth house represents um you know secret enemies so uh, kind of you know pay play close attention to who's saying what and just don't react because the reaction may not go as well as you think it will because communication is not really uh, is not going to go well this time you know venus is combust so just and especially women you know make close uh, pay close attention to what women are saying make sure you res respect them make sure you you know you give them due respect and you you know you have a good relationship to them but be very cautious cautious at the workplace and 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 figure out who's saying what behind your back um, ninth house is the house of your dharma the best remedy for you is to stay spiritual stay true to your guru and make sure you get his blessings every day for libra ascendants aquarius is the fifth house the fifth house represents children uh, fun having fun creativity and um, Venus is your ascendant Lord so you actually may be feeling very detached uh, from your children and the fact you may feel like I'm just not having fun you may feel emotionally and mentally very low at this time because don't forget your ascendant Lord is combust and it represents good things in your in in your um, in your birth chart so you may feel like uh, you know I just don't want to do anything or I'm not having fun just leave me alone kind of it's that kind of energy where you say I just don't feel like it just leave me alone sort of a, of, a, of an energy now <clears throat> the magic key remedy to this is because it also rules your ninth house which is the house of spirituality and guru that if you could just bow to the guru or within yourself introspect and meditate for a few minutes every day or bow to the guru whoever your guru is and ask them for divine blessing even if it's two or three minutes a day it will miraculously unlock the key to good health and not only good health but good luck and happiness it's all it's almost going to work like a um like a magic remedy so to speak so just do that and i think <laughs> then you might see how how fast that works so good luck attendance uh, aquarius is your fourth house which rules your home ha happiness you know domestic happiness and um venus rules your house of partnerships which could be um, you know a spouse your spouse a partner or a business partnerships and also your 12th house which is the house of endings so to speak you have to be so careful right now of what you, how you treat your partners in general or your relationships in general or people uh, within your household in general or they will actually may actually just you may just combust the relationship because venus is combust meaning the relationships have a tendency to end during a venus combustion period so you have to be very careful how you treat people uh in the business world and at home and especially your spouse or your partner or your you know your main person uh any kind of partner or your relationship may end now i this is actually a warning for the scorpio ascendants do not do not take anybody for granted do not say things you're going to regret later because this this period actually um may signal the end of a relationship a key relationship also that something that you don't really want it's not something that you will want and all of a sudden it will happen because R R rahu is ruling it and rahu is a significator of all of a sudden events that come out of nowhere so be very careful uh, this is almost something that you need to watch for in the next <laughs> month or 
So for Sagittarius Ascendants, um, Aquarius is your third house. So the third house rules uh, younger siblings, it, uh, short distance travels, and courage, determination, and your hard work. Um, as Venus is the ruler of your sixth house and your house of gains. So you may feel like no matter how much hard work you're putting in, how courageous and determination you are, you're just not getting gains or any benefits from like your work or at work. Uh, so um, don't lose heart. This is only a temporary phase. Uh, as soon as Venus moves on and gets out of the combustion, you will uh, you know see good benefits if you're if you're putting in the work for it. Uh, it's it's a, you know it's temporary. So uh, you may see that. The other thing is that. Um, younger siblings make sure you, you stay good terms with your younger siblings and take care of them uh, they may need your attention you know um and i just make sure you're there for them if if they need your attention capricorn ascendance aquarius it's your second house the second house is um you know rules uh family finance finance in general and of course you're eating us as, as well uh venus rules your uh, fifth house which is your house of you know children f having fun and also your career lord so if you put all of that together you may feel that you're being pushed and pulled by you know your maybe your children and your career also that you may have the urge to spend or splurge on uh, things for your children or having fun now if you want to do that go right ahead but you know you may I just don't regret it later so just put some thought into it before you you know sp spend on uh, creative things or spend on things that you're having fun on uh, like I said if you want to do it that's fine but just make sure you put some thought into it so you don't you regret it later uh, career um, you may feel a little out of energy or feel like a little low uh, at work but again like I said it's a short transit and it'll go by fast so just make sure pay very close attention to the your family finance and finance in general. Aquarius ascendance, um, this transit is happening in your first house, which is your ascendant house. So um, definitely um, the feeling of lack of energy in your body. Uh, Venus rules your, you know, domestic happiness and also your dharma and guru. So uh, definitely the feeling of physical uh, feeling of unwell and also the feeling that you may not be feeling emotionally satisfied or happy in within your domestic household you know set up so general feeling of unwell and not feeling up to it or energetic is definitely going to be happening right now I think the key the quick key to you know uh, helping yourself during this time is to uh, do some spiritual pursuits maybe you can meditate a little bit or you know whatever prayers or whatever some spiritual you know practice that you do introspection within yourself self you know spend some time within yourself and just kind of talk yourself through this time it's going to be a difficult time but uh, it's a short time and it'll go by fast but but again you know um meditation a little bit of meditation and just kind of you know um spending some time you know with some spiritual sort of pastime will definitely make it go faster and better for you for Pisces ascendance, this transit is happening in your 12th house. The 12th house is a tough house because it rules um, the endings of certain things or it rules expenses or a loss of some kind. Um, the expense could just be monetary expense and sometimes the loss could be the loss of certain things like so and um, uh, also Venus for uh, Pisces ascendance rules the third house and the eighth house so eighth house is also difficulty obstacles losses and delays and the third house is um, you know your courage and your determination and your younger siblings so maybe some difficulty or maybe you need to be there for your siblings for something uh, maybe they they need you and so you need to make sure you're there for them the other thing is uh, because Mars is involved uh, you, if you, and the third house is involved uh, and as well as the 12 so uh, if you're looking to sell property at this time uh, you know you may be in the middle of or trying to sell property um, it's not a bad time to do it you may actually be involved in that because that whole setup determines that you know you might be in the process of selling some property um, you may see some obstacles because the eighth house gets activated a little bit as well but if it doesn't that's great but definitely you're looking at something about for selling property um, just make sure because the third house denotes paperwork so just make sure very sure that all the paperwork and everything that you are doing you know if you're selling something like property or whatever um is uh in order check everything and double check everything you might be missing papers or something like that or the, because there's some obstacle is going to come up so paperwork is the number one thing uh just make sure you have all, everything in in order and um otherwise things will go well it's a good time if you're selling something it, 
it you know it might be delayed a little bit but it will go through so this this you know the conjunction and the transit is setting up for a uh, force selling of, of you know because Mars is involved selling of property or something like that but otherwise it's a good transit um, it, not a bad one for you guys um, just make sure that um, you're there for your younger siblings if they <laughs> if they need you to be there if you've liked this video make sure you hit the like button Please share it with your friends and family. I'm sure there's somebody out there that could use those love tips. And also, subscribe to my channel, please. I have so many people watching my videos, but everybody isn't subscribing. So make sure you subscribe to it. That way you get notification of my when my new video comes out. Goodbye for now.